Hmm, what do I like about the human trainer? See how she bangs out four to five push-ups, three, four, awesome. Starts the motion again. It's working your obliques. And then pull yourself up. Now you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Wow, I hope one day I can ascend to that level. But before I can use a human trainer to actually work on myself, how about we identify what the human trainer is comprised of, right? Right, how are we gonna do that, you ask? Well, we're gonna take a look at the trusty, not to mention stylish, human trainer goodies bag. So let's take a peek inside. We have here, the handles, handle one, handle two. We have here, the main straps. Strap one, strap two. We have here what we refer to as door pillows. Don't try sleeping on them. Foot straps. And we have what we call here versatility anchors or extended straps. Now it's worth mentioning that these don't actually come in the basic kit. However, they're sold separately and they do come in what we call the Human Trainer Pro Kit. Now we'll touch on exactly how these can be used and utilized to amplify the versatility of this human trainer suspension system in a little bit. For now, how about I just show you how easy it is to set this up. So, we found ourselves a door. And, as the name on the door implies, it's our office door. Now, when setting up the human trainer system, you wanna make sure that you're in a door space that is adequate, and by adequate, we mean sufficient to accommodate your wingspan. Now everyone is different sizes, different heights, so that's gonna be a difference in accordance to your, you know, your specifics. Now, at first glance, they're probably gonna to say to me, this is not gonna be suitable, it's not gonna cut it for you because there's a wall right here. But that's okay, because for demonstrative purposes, we're gonna set up the human training system right here just to illustrate not only how easy it is to set up, but how strong it is. So bear with me while I set it up. So you open the door first and foremost, you grab your two trusty door pillows, you swing them over the top of the door, you close the door in, give it a little tug. Now, before you even get to this point, I need you to, make, to go through a checklist. A, make sure no one's behind the door. B, make sure no one's behind the door. And C, excuse me if I'm being redundant, make sure no one's behind the door. Why you ask? Two main reasons. Reason number one, be considerate, don't trap them in the room. Reason number two, let's say hypothetically you're doing a suspension push up and on your way back up, someone decides to open that door, you will fall flat on your face. Trust me, I may be speaking from experience. <laughs> All right. So you take your main strap number one, you attach it to door pillow number one, just like that. Main strap number two, attach it, door pillow number two. Take your trustworthy handles and you attach the handles in accordance to where you have determined your level is. Me, I think I could attach it to the fourth loop. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now, some of our TOBT pros, they're show offs. They can probably get it to the first or the second loop. I'll encourage you, no rather, I'm gonna implore you, don't follow suit. Yes, they provide a model for us, but they are, as the word implies, pros. Go with your level. Me, I think I'm at the fourth loop, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I know you're thinking, you've gone through all this trouble to set it up for us, but let's revisit the, the, the issue that you may mention that, we, that a lot of us may have, which is a lack of adequate door space. Not to worry, we have some foresight and we've thought about this. There's an alternative. What's provided, or what you can purchase, is called ceiling anchors. Now, the ceiling anchors are sold separately, as I mentioned, or they come in the previously mentioned Human Trainer Pro Kit. So, you would take these ceiling anchors, you attach them into the ceiling, 
Then you proceed to take your main straps. Strap number one, strap number two. At this point, you don't really have a need for the door pillows because the ceiling anchors are gonna supplement them. You take strap one, strap two, you attach them to your ceiling anchors, and you're in business. Bada bing, bada boom, making use of the human training system. For now, we're gonna proceed to use it at the door. All right. Strong, sturdy, no slack. All right, now it's arguable, but I'm a relatively big guy, but I have no qualms or no reservations about this human training system being able to support my weight. Why? Because it is tried and tested to support over a thousand pounds. So me, I'm no contest for this. Now, as we mentioned, you wanna make sure that you have adequate space. So we're gonna move to a gym so we can make sure we can do all our side to side motions that the human trainer enables us to do and all our forward and back. Now, this can be used virtually anywhere and you don't have to take my word for it. Furthermore, I don't expect you to. Take a look at this. Um, this piece of equipment, you can literally take it everywhere. I know what you're thinking. I don't have a Jeep, so what am I going to attach it to? Lucky for you, it comes with door anchors. You can attach it to pretty much anything. A door, a pole, a tree. Whatever you can find that'll hold your weight, you can attach this thing to. So, as you can see, we have our human trainer system set up. And, as you can probably notice, we have two different setups. Reason for that, because we want to illustrate the versatility of the versatility anchor, also known as the extended straps. Now, for someone like myself, the main strap is perfect. Why do you ask? For two reasons right now. We're in a setting, the gym setting, where we have a very convenient located bar. So it's very easy to attach the main strap. Furthermore, for the level that I'm at, the kind of intensity that this type of workout is going to offer me is more than suitable. Now, let's say you're someone who can get a little more, get a little more intense with your workout. Maybe you're a TOBT pro, you're gonna need a little more length. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to extend the main strap. Reason for that is, the lower you get to the ground, the more the forces of nature, gravity in particular, impose on you. So you get a more uh, intense workout. Reason number two, which to me is probably even of more paramount importance, is that you're not always gonna be in a gym setting. You're not always gonna wanna use a human training system in the gym. Let's say you're outside, right? Let's say you wanna attach it to a tree and you have a high reaching branch you need to loop around. Or let's say you're in a football field, you're gonna make use of the field goal post. Well, there's a noticeable difference, right? And this, the main strap, may not be suitable, it may not cut it. So, you're gonna take your extended strap, you're gonna attach it to the field goal post or to the tree, and you're gonna be good to go. But for now, we can just make use of the main strap and our bar. Attach it to the first loop. The reason why I attach it to the first loop is because my other main strap is attached to the first loop. So, you want to ensure that your straps are the same length. You also want to ensure that your hands are at the same level. And speaking of my hands being at the same level, I'm extremely glad that the human training system offers two independent straps. Why? Don't ask me. He'll explain it to you. Pay attention to as she's using this piece of equipment. Again, two independent anchor points. You're probably going to see when she's doing this and she starts to get fatigued that the arms kind of come into play. Now, this is where the human trainer comes into play because on other suspension systems that's just one anchor point, sometimes if one arm pulls more than the other, it will slip and you will be off balance. 
there's a chance of injury. The person might not want to try that exercise again. That's not going to happen here. It's nice and sturdy. All right. So I'm an individual who has an insane, an insane schedule. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people can say the same, right? So I try to work out two or three times a week. Uh, all right, I'm massaging the truth. I work out twice a week, but when I do work out on those two times of the week, I ensure that I do a circuit workout. The reason why I do a circuit workout is because with the limited time that I do give myself to work out, I make sure that I can make use of all the major muscles in my body. And a circuit workout does exactly that. It works all the major muscles that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, right? So with a circuit workout, I'm gonna be able to work my chest, my back, my core, which consists of my abdomens and my lower back, and my legs, front and back, right? So, I'm gonna get into a push-up. Make sure that you could draw a straight line from your shoulders to your hips, to your knees, to your ankles. In other words, if your hips are sticking out or they are sagging forward, neither one is proper. Now, I try to knock out about, about 20 of those. And if you feel like the workout isn't intense enough, you can always adjust the angle by going a little further back. So that's a conventional push-up and it works out the main component of the chest or what you can say is the center. Now there's another chest workout that's called the fly that helps to work out the inner and the outer muscles of the chest. Now normally I wouldn't make one in conjunction with the next on the same day while I'm doing my circle workout but I'm going to exemplify how to do it right now. Now I was once told while exercising with this particular exercise, you should always try to mimic nature. So as the name implies, it's called the fly. So we're gonna fly. Keep in mind, you wanna make sure that you're on your toes because the key component of using the suspension system is that you never wanna feel like you're not working out. On your toes, make sure, you know, your body's like a pendulum and that there's a straight line that can be drawn from your head all the way to your pelvis. And we're gonna fly. Once again, we're gonna try to knock out about 20 of those. Now, we're gonna do some rowing. The rowing is gonna work out the long muscles of your back. Here is how you do a proper inverted row. Hands are on the handles, feet stepping forward, so that at the point of maximal contraction, you are not standing up straight. So that's a good inverted row. Here are two repetitions. One, to make it a little bit more difficult, you can actually walk forward and lift yourself up this way. Alright, once again you're going to bang out about 20 of those. Now, this rowing exercise is great for the long muscles of the back, but hey, we gotta, you know, address and work out the horizontal or the upper muscles of the back. Now for that, we have an exercise that is essentially the same. You're gonna duplicate more or less the same idea, the same rhythm, but we like to call it, or we can dub it, the reverse chest press row. Now, you're gonna have the same starting position. Feet extended and straight trying to mimic that pendulum action. You're gonna make sure that once again, your, from your head to your pelvis, 
you can draw a straight line. Now, the difference is, the variation that I mentioned, is your hands. Think of your hands as being in a reverse chest press. This is gonna enable you to accomplish that 90 degree angle when you reach the apex of your row. So you're gonna have your hands extended. Here we go. And if it helps, to make sure you get that right form, talk to yourself. Elbows out. All right, now you're gonna treat these two rowing exercises kind of like how you treat the two chest exercises. You're gonna alternate when you do them. You're not gonna do them on the same day. So me personally, when I do my chest flies, I like to do my reverse 90 degree angle rows. Now, <sighs> to the creme de la creme, the core. Once again, the core consists of working on your abdominals and your lower back. Although, we must mention, one of the great attributes of the human trainer is that it continuously works out your core. Why? Because it's a suspension system, so your core is always in use 24 seven, no matter of the exercise that you're enabling. However, it is important that we isolate the core and do exercises that, that tackle the core specifically. Now, I'm pretty sure you guys know about planks. Now, planks can be done in an upright position, or they can be done in a uh, horizontal position. I'm gonna leave that one for the pros. We're gonna tackle the upright ones. So, once again, you're gonna be on your tippy toes, because you always want to make sure you can make use of the suspension that a human trainer naturally lends itself to. Hands up. Now, I personally like to do planks towards the end of my workouts because it exhausts you. So whatever gas you have left in the tank, it's going to empty it. And that's the way you know you're doing a workout. Mind you, I only work out twice a week, so I need to make sure that I get the full effect. So I'm gonna recommend you do planks towards the end of your workout. Why? <laughs> well, you'll see after I'm done. Feel that burn, hold it. Hold onto the handles. And unlike a push-up position, you're going to hold your hands up higher, like so. Very important, keep your body straight, so you should have a straight line from your shoulders, to your hips, to your knees, to your ankles. The higher you put your hands up, the more of a challenge this becomes on your abdominals, lower back muscles. Ah. Now remember, it's okay to talk to yourself. When doing the plank, your hands should always go up before your body goes forward. Now it's okay if it's done simultaneously, but it shouldn't look something like that. It should be a smooth motion with your hand leading your body. Talk to yourself. Hands up, 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 up. Oh. Hold it. Oh. Alright, so I knocked out about 16. Okay, I'm gonna start the truth again. That's my fourth one. We just gotta do set to 20, but I'm being a little bit of a show off. I usually do this towards the end of my workout, like I mentioned previously, because this completely exhausts you and it empties your tank. Right now, I'm doing it before and after legs. Eh, that's a little ill-advised because you don't actually have to try to get to make 20 reps. Just do your max. It might be five, it might be six. Let's be realistic. Just make sure you exhaust your body. You can make it a full, complete workout. The core is very important. Now, I'm not that much of a show-off. I know my limitations, and I'm not going to go past those parameters. So for those horizontal planks, Brenda, you can show them how it's done, girl. Again, with this piece of equipment, the more out 
weak you are from your anchor point, the harder it's going to be. But today, because I'm using my Jeep, I'm going to be kind of close to it because I want to show you a couple of things. Key things to remember, there's always progressions. You can do this stuff off your elbows or you can do it in yoga plank. I'm going to show you a bit of both. Just like any other plank, you want to make sure that you can hold a normal plank for about a minute before you even try doing it in the suspension trainer. And when I say hold a plank for a minute, I mean hold a properly formed plank for a minute. You're going to make sure everything is engaged. Pull your little belly button towards your spine. It's a good mental reminder. First thing we're going to do, just the normal plank. I'm just going to come up on my elbows to show you. Looks like this. You don't want sway and you don't want an A-frame. You want nice form. And you just hold. And you can hold that for as long as you want. But if you're like me, I like to combine exercises. So when I'm doing a plank, I like to think, what else can I do with this? Because I'm suspended already. So I'm going to show you a normal plank and then I'm going to add in a leg abduction. And then maybe if I'm feeling really crazy, I'm going to add in a knee tuck. Looks like this. Hold my plank. Leg abduction, in, and a tuck. You can do like 10 to 15 of these. And then you just lower yourself down. Way to go, Brenda. Thank you for that. And please, allow me to take a moment, because I think it'd be hugely remiss if I didn't, to congratulate Brenda on her personal accomplishment and achievements. Did you guys see those before and after pictures? Wow, in my opinion, perfect illustration how commitment to the, on the road to goodness can pay dividends. Congratulations, nothing but inspirational, astonishing. Now, we're gonna get into the leg workouts. Now, a great way to work out your front and back leg muscles, not to mention those glutes, ladies, is squats. Now, as all the exercises that we've illustrated and exemplified, the human trainer is great in assisting with doing squats. Now, you want to ensure, as with all exercises with the human trainer, that you still have taught. You don't want any slack. The primary difference with squats is that when you are doing the squats, when you're lifting yourself back up, if you don't have to, you're not going to actually use the human, the human trainer to actually lift yourself up. It's just going to be there to kind of aid you, as I said. Now, once again, you want to try to knock out about 20 of these. Now, since you're, I, I only do this one workout that attacks all the muscles of the leg, maybe I'll do 40 each set. Now, it is worth mentioning that there are exercises that you can do with the human trainer that will tackle, or rather isolate, the, the, less, the, the muscles of the leg. For instance, you can have lunges for the, for the front muscles and hamstring exercises for the back. Now, I'm not actually going to show you that because, like I said, I'm usually pressed for time and I focus on doing my squats. All-inclusive hits all the muscles at once. However, if you use these leg straps that I mentioned before, you can do those exercises I just mentioned. Lunges for the front, hamstring exercises for the back. The TOBT Pros are going to show you exactly how that's done. Take it away, guys. I'm going to show you the easiest way to actually get your feet into this is actually to hold it in one hand and then feed it to the opposite leg like this. If you try to do it any other way, it's going to be pretty tough. Now, when you guys are doing any type of lunging workouts, don't start your lunges until you are balanced. If you need balance, throw the hands out. If you're good, you can actually, you can actually just go straight down and push straight up, okay? If, once again, if you need balance out here, if you're good, just keep the hands right in here. So, five straight lunges. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, I'm Vanessa Rojas, a fitness model and figure competitor. I've been looking for a piece of equipment that really takes me to the next level. Really want to condition my body for next year. Uh, I got a chance to try the human trainer. Uh, it's a suspension equipment tool. 
um, really really liked it I've um, been considering different uh, type of equipment and today I got to try some really challenging uh, exercises and believe me my abs my core it is crying for help so um, it is practical and it's very effective and it's something that I definitely will be considering and trying in the future so watch out uh, you'll be seeing more of me Alright, so as we wrap up, a few points that are worth highlighting and mentioning again. I try to do 20 reps of each exercise. I aim for two or three rounds of each of those each of those exercises. I always aim for three, but let's face it, sometimes you know you're strapped to time and it just doesn't permit you to do so, or you know your body talks to you. Maybe you have a, a pain in one of your in one of your joints or your muscles, or you have a nagging injury, and you just you can't you can't get those three rounds up. You know what? But we're always in the business of continuously challenging ourselves, right? Right. So when you feel like an exercise has become too basic, too simple, intensify the exercise. Now, I've showed you how to intensify the exercise, how to progress the exercise, so make sure you perfect that. Why are you going to want to perfect that? Well, the fact is our next video is all about progressions, progressions, progressions. So get on your grind horse and make sure you're prepared for that. Now, as a token of our appreciation, for those of you who've actually made an earnest effort to intensify those exercises, to you know perfect those foundational exercises, to work on some of those progressions, and feel like you're ready to ascend to the next level, at the end of this video, we're going to bring you a crazy and intense circuit workout brought to you by none other than Coach Bex. <clears throat> now, before we can do all that, you're going to actually have to get a human trainer. You still don't have one? Not a problem. Hit us up. Go to whotrains.com. Make sure you contact us. Let us know you need one, and we'll get you one at that TOBT VIP special. What can I say? Travis, train to be trained. As usual, we're bringing awareness for your fitness and health. So come get some. Hey, what's going on, y'all? David here from Dynamic Athletic Bodies, uh, coming to you with another uh, great circuit. I got a nice new piece of equipment you guys are gonna like. It's actually called the Human Trainer. Uh, it's a great piece of equipment. It's a suspension trainer. Um, it's new on the market, and uh, I just wanna take you guys through some circuits, show you guys some really um, uh, fun circuits you can do and quick circuits you can do, because I know people are short on time. So, what I'm gonna show you is a quick little circuit. I've got about uh, five or six exercises on here. I'll show you what to do. We're gonna do some chest press supine rolls, bicep curls, uh, tricep extensions, and mountain climbers. Typically these workouts are done for time, so this would be like a 15 minute time limit. I'm just going to basically go through one round of it to show you what you'll do um, at the end of your circuit. Basically if you want, you can take a 30 second break or break as needed, but get your clock or get your timer, set it for 15 minutes, and you're going to just bang out these workouts for something that's quick, that's effective, and that works. And that's going to give you a nice dynamic athletic body, okay? So this is how it goes. Check it out. So as we do these, we're gonna have our body nice and tight, coming down, and we're pressing. Now typically, as we do these exercises, if you want it a little more challenging, you're actually gonna move your body till it's a little bit more supine to the ground. If you want it to be a little bit easier, you can actually move your body up. This will make it a little bit easier for people who are beginners, okay? So, chest press, eight reps, okay? It's really important to keep tension, keep a tight core, keep your elbows elevated. Good. I'm gonna switch over to our supine rows, just hitting the back and the biceps. So going here, nice tall back once again. And we're rotating the wrists, pulling our elbows back, keeping our body nice and tight. Always maintaining a good tension in the body, okay? Good, from here we're gonna go to our bicep curls. Once again, we wanna make it a little bit less challenging. We can move the body up. Palms face the sky. Pulling the arms up past the ears. Good. 
good. Next one, you're gonna flip around. Tricep extensions. You're standing, these are called a French press. Or in some circles, they call these skull crushers. Okay, so we're gonna have our hands straight up in front. Keep the elbows tucked in. Fall forward. And you're pushing back, working the triceps. Good, next one, running man, or what I call the mountain climbers. So once again, we're gonna come down to this position here, push up position. What we're gonna actually do is we're gonna run the feet, really hitting the core, 16 total. Whew. Good little circuit, so once again, that was round one. Uh, I don't even know exactly how much time that took me. Didn't take me too long, but typically that, we keep going around and around and around. 50 minute time limit, break only as needed. Have fun, talk to you soon.